The 2025 campaign has not come to an end yet as the Reds are playing host to the Brewers here at Great American Ballpark in a game 163 to decide who gets the privilege to go out to Philadelphia to take on the Phillies, who will decide who takes on the Giants in the actual wildcard game. So the Brewers are going to be sending out the right-hander Eric Fetty, making his 30th start of the season for the Beer Makers. Take a look at the Red Legs lineup on the day listed 129, as well as their starting pitcher, the lanky lefty, Nick Lodolo making his 33rd start for Cincinnati on the season, as well as the Milwaukee 1-2-9. We'll start things off top half of the second inning. Tyrone Taylor at the dish with two outs, unloading on the first pitch. He mashes lefties, and he shows that here. Puts it in the left field seats. A solo shot puts the beer makers up 1-0 here early on in this game. Luckily, the Reds had a hot bat of their own. Brian Anderson comes to the dish in the bottom half of the frame and unloads on the first pitch he sees, cranks it into the left center field seats. A solo shot makes it a 1-1 tie game. Bottom of the third now, Taylor Walls laying down a drag bunt to the right side of the infield, uses his fleet feet to get on base with two bats, keep the inning alive, and then John Power Crawford makes an appearance. J.P. Crawford, noted power hitter, Line drive shot into the right field seats. A two-run blast, and it's now a 3-1 Reds lead. Their first lead of the ball game. Move things on top of the fourth. Two outs, and the Reds keeping the, or the Brewers, I should say, keeping the inning alive. Gavin Sheets draws a walk as he spits on ball four. And then Tyrone Taylor picks up his second hit of the day as he slices one to the right side. Then it would bring up Hunter Renfro, who chops one over to third base as Mr. Ground Ball does what he does and gets out of the jam. Now on to the bottom of the fourth, Brian Anderson again. A solo shot out to left center field. His second homer of the game. He continues to be on fire here at the end of the season. Move things on top of the six now, and the power surge continues. This time it's Luis Arias of the Beer Makers. A solo shot for them is now a 4-2 ball game. Cuts the lead in half. Lodolo then facing Brandon Lowe. Spits on ball four. He'll take his base with one out to get himself on the bases. Now with two outs, Tyrone Taylor picks up his third hit of the game here. Back-to-back -back base, or not back-to-back, -back, but two base runners in the inning now for the, Bre the Brewers. And it brings on Landon Marceau out of the bullpen as Nick Lodolo's day will come to an end. Two outs, two on, and he gets his man Hunter Renfro to go down swinging on the big slider. Jared Eikhoff came on in the sixth for Milwaukee and then stayed on in the seventh for a second inning of work where Ken Suzuki, the DH, rips one back up the middle for a base knock to kick off the inning. Then it brings up De La Cruz, who's going to go down into the right field corner. This one hops up off the dirt, up against the wall. Suzuki gets in a third base, so now there's two runners in scoring position for Fagan, who rips one into left field. That's going to score one as De La Cruz just moves up a bag. Suzuki makes it 5-2 as he comes across, and then Fagan would go and swipe second with no throw. So two runners are in scoring position, opens up first base. The beer makers decide to intentionally walk Luis Arise, set up bases drunk for Adrian Merced, who bloops one into center field. This one's going to land in front front of the diving glove of Garrett Mitchell. Everybody moves up a bag. It's now a 6-2 ball game, and the beer makers will turn to the left-hander Amir Garrett for the 61st time this season. Still bases drunk, and it's going to be a little pop fly here from Taylor Walls, caught by Renfro. A runner will tag up even with his arm from right field, so Fagan scores, makes it a 7-2 ball game. J.P. Crawford comes up and hits one to deep center field, but Mitchell does put it away in the deepest, in one of the deepest parts of the ballpark there as he tags up the runner from second, tags up the third, and then Stevenson would fly out to right field. So nothing else going in that inning. They would take that 7-2 lead into the top of the eighth where Chase Petty comes on here for the Reds, and he would proceed to give up an absolute moonshot here to Gavin Sheets, the man they acquired from the D-backs at the deadline. An absolute bomb. Solo shot, though, and it's now a still a 7-3 game. Hunter Harvey comes on in the bottom half of the frame for the Brewers. 
And with runners on second and third with nobody out, De La Cruz grabs one over to the right side. That'll drive in a run on the ground ball. And then it's 8-3. And Fagan pokes one out the right field. It's now a 9-3 ball game. They would take that lead into the top of the ninth. Chase Pitty stole on the hill as he would get Severino to strike out swinging. And the Reds win this game 163 over the Brewers as they will advance to the game 164 by a score of 9-3 here over Milwaukee. Brian Anderson picks up player of the game honors on the day. Well-deserved, a two-home run, three-hit day for Anderson. J.P. Crawford also had a two-run home run. 13 total hits for the Cincinnati offense. Lodolo, not the best outing ever, but the offense does pick him up as they put up nine runs to secure themselves a trip to Philadelphia to take on the Phillies in Game 164. And it is now time for that game 164 as the Red Legs travel out to the city of brotherly love to take on the Phillies to decide who actually plays in the wild card game. Tony Agonsolin getting the nod here for Cincinnati, making his 33rd start of the campaign. Take a look at the Phillies lineup on the day listed 1-2-9, as well as their starter. It'll be Mick Abel making his sixth start here in the 2025 season for Philadelphia. Also take a look at the Cincinnati 1-2-9 on the day. We'll start things off top half of the first inning it is Taylor Walls getting things started with a drag bunt to the right side showing off the fleet fleet once more as he gets into first base with the drag bunt and then with one out he would proceed to go and not swipe second base he actually gets thrown out by Real Muto and then Tyler Stevenson would rip one into center field where Harrison Bader lays out for and makes the play. The man continues to haunt us in center field. Move things on, bottom of the first now. It's Bryson Stott blooping one out to left field, lands in front of a rise. A base knock there with one out, brings up Alec Bohm as he slices one to the right side. That's gonna be back-to-back -back singles. Stott goes first to third and runners are now on the corners for the fills. Brings up Bryce Harper who crushes one out to left center field. This one's gonna get down into the gap up against the wall. That'll score two runs both Stott and Baum as Harper gets in there with a one out triple to give the Phillies a two nothing lead in this game. Gonsolin would then clutch up though as he gets both Real Muto and Kyle Schwarber to go in on the big 12-6 breaking ball. Move things on top of the third inning and Spencer Brickhouse with a laser into the right field seats cuts the lead in half. It's now a 2-1 game here as Brickhouse cuts the lead in half with a solo shot. Move things on bottom of the third now. Bryson Stott pops one up to the foul territory. Left side, De La Cruz puts it away. Looks like a simple play, but somehow Tony Gonsolin got hurt on the play. Ended up, I believe, fracturing something in his hand. He has to come out of the game. So Landon Marceau from LSU comes on here for the 17th time this season since being called up from AAA Louisville. And he would proceed to get out of the inning as he strikes at Alec Baum on the slider. A scoreless third for the Reds pitching. So top of the fourth now, J.P. Crawford rips one right back up the middle. That's going to be a base knock to kick off the inning for him. And then it brings up Brian Anderson. And what can you expect from this guy now? Another home run for him. Anderson just absolutely tearing the cover off the ball here late in the season. Another home run. This one a two-run shot. Puts the Reds on top 3-2. Their first lead of the ball game. Bottom of the fourth now. Ground ball from Harper for at number one. Then it's Real Muto who comes up. Also grinds out to the left side. Two down quickly for the Phillies. And then it would bring up Kyle Schwarber, who unfortunately is going to not ground ball. He is going to lift this one in the air into the left center field seats, and it's a tie ball game here in Philadelphia, thanks to Kyle Schwarber. Ryan Weathers came on in the bottom of the sixth inning as we move things along here for Cincinnati. And leading off the inning, it would be Bryson Stott, who smacks one over to the left side. That's a base knock to kick off the inning. Then it's Alec Bohm. First pitch swinging, grand ball up the middle. That is a base knock back-to-back -back singles here for the Phillies. So nobody on, or nobody out, two on, I should say. Ground ball, it's going to be a double play. Bryce Harper, two down. Now runner on third base, and Weathers gives up a fly ball to right field. Anderson going back has no play on it. Real Muto 
bust this one open for the Phillies. They take a 2-0 lead here in his 22nd home run of the season. Move things on, top of the eighth inning. Reds trying to battle back now. Ryan Stanek on here for Philadelphia. And De La Cruz is going to spit on ball four for a leadoff walk. Get a base runner on, tying run to the plate now. De La Cruz then goes and swipes second base to get himself into scoring position here with one out. So he's over there. De, uh, Merced's at the dish, ground ball over the shortstop. Anderson, easy play for him. Runner moves up, and now there's two outs. And Corey Knable comes on here for the Phillies. Their closer looking to shut the door here on the Reds. Taylor Walls pitch gets away from the catcher, Realmuto. That allows De La Cruz to score on the wild pitch. It's now a 5-4 ball game. Unfortunately, Taylor Walls could not keep the inning going, though, as he grinds at the second base. And we move things on to the top of the ninth now. J.P. Crawford up. Good hanging curveball there to swing at, and somehow just pops it up to Harper in right field. One down. Then it brings up Stevenson, gets jammed up and in, slices it over to the right side, foul territory. Hoskins puts it away for out number two, and then Anderson also gets jammed. This one's going to look like it might get in no man's land, but Gene Segura makes the play, and the Phillies... Come out on top here in game 164. They will be moving on to take on the Giants in San Francisco in the one game wild card. 5 4 is your final in this game, and another heartbreaking end to the season here for this Cincinnati Reds ball club. Still have yet to make the playoffs under this new regime here in Cincinnati. Last year, missing out on the playoffs because of just the absolutely monumental collapse in the month of August. And this year, missing out because of just some crazy playoff dynamics at the end of the season. And a slow start to the season definitely cost them as well. So the Red Legs will now look to head into the offseason and prepare for the 2026 campaign. And hopefully that is the year that this Reds regime makes the playoffs. And with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here at MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I am saying, can these Reds catch a break? I mean, come on.